Hey guys, King Gath here with Bethesda Mod School. In this lesson, we're gonna go over the rest of the snap point types that I didn't cover in the original video. Now, before I go into this lesson, I wanna cover a couple of things. First up, I burned out my voice a little bit last night recording a very long Let's Play session, so apologies if I have to keep stopping and drinking during this one. Second up is I'm trying a new format with this lesson, so that's why we're in the game. I don't know if this will work for every lesson, but in this one, I think it will, and that's where I'm gonna uh, record the demonstration first, so that way when I'm showing you how to do things, I can refer back to the video so you'll know what I'm talking about, because I think sometimes the stuff I'm explaining, I'm getting a little too wordy on without any reference material for you guys to think about and so this way you'll have seen a demonstration in the game I can refer to those moments and hopefully that will make things a little clearer so if you like this format if it works well definitely leave comments below so that I know to continue to do this uh, I think it's gonna work very well for this particular video next up I want to talk about something about series in general and that's how I'm choosing these tutorials because I'm sure it seems very haphazard and random right now I'm doing tutorials and then coming back to the that particular topic uh, basically months later well the way I'm looking at this whole series series is I'm looking at it in the long game sense is that it's going to take me years to get all of the tutorials done that I want and these will be useful for many many years to come because not only do Fallout and uh, Bethesda titles in general tend to get mods made for them for a decade uh, but also most of the information for any particular Bethesda game tends to be useful in the next game as well so I'm anticipating that most of what I teach you guys in this series will work for the next game as well which will also have a decade uh, tail on it likely so we were talking these videos being useful for the next 15 years so I figure there's no hurry in me getting out any particular tutorial and you guys uh, when you come back years later you'll be able to jump right to the the ones in order without it feeling like there's this giant gap so I'm looking at it long game like that but if you are looking to see a particular tutorial get bumped up the queue and happen a little sooner definitely comment below and let me know about the information you're looking for that's actually why this particular one came up I have seen several comments wondering about how to do certain things in general with the game and they happen to be related to snap points and it reminded me that I hadn't come back and done the advanced snap point video. I also look to our Discord server. Um, for those of you who haven't heard this yet, I've mentioned it in some of the earlier videos, but we do have a Discord server to help new modders. It was originally designed for some Settlements add-on pack authors and has spent, since been expanded. You can find out how to access that if you join the simsettlements.com forums uh, and people there can give you an invite to this Discord server. And I pay attention to the communication that's happening in the modder help channels there. So when I see a topic come up uh, frequently or um, in a way that I realize there's missing information in the community that ends up spurring me to write a tutorial on it and then get it into this series. All right, so now let's move on to the actual demonstration. Uh, so you'll see here, and actually before I even show you the model there, if you look down in the, the uh, preview window, you'll see that the outhouse we've used in many previous tutorials is spinning kind of weird. And that is done with a connect point I'm going to show you today called p-ws rotation and that allows you to set the offset that rotation is done around so you can see it happens in here so instead of it rotating around the center of the model kind of the center of the toilet where you'd expect it instead does it at a weird angle and this isn't particularly useful for this building type but you can see a lot of examples of something where it would be useful and that would be something like these flags having the flag rotate at the edge would make a lot more sense so that you could position it around a flagpole and those are the types of times when you would set up a rotation to be off center from the model most of the time you'll end up just putting the either not including the p-ws rotation at all which will just make it a rotate around the origin instead or you will just put it in and line it up in the same point as the origin speaking of the origin you'll notice that this model is green like it can be placed by the game even though it's floating above the ground and I briefly mentioned this in the first snap point tutorial the p-ws-origin tells the game what point needs to be lined up to the ground for this to be considered a an appropriate placement and uh, in this case I put it way below the model just to demonstrate that it's not particularly useful for this it could be useful for something like a roof piece where you wanted the the player to more easily place it on the ground without having or place it floating above the ground without having to have the floors and walls in place. For example, the vanilla roof pieces tend to only place well if you've already built the walls. Um, whereas if you wanted to set up your roof pieces to be able to place, be placeable first easily, you could set up an origin way below and that might allow that to happen. Now, uh, another thing to talk about with these two particular snap points, the uh, PWS origin and PW rotation is that if there's something wrong with the collision in your model which can come up often when you're building static collections like I showed you in some of the earlier kit bashing tutorials uh, if the collision is kind of broken or busted in some way due to you maybe using a model that wasn't designed to be a static uh, you can find that these placing these 
snap points doesn't actually have any effect. So if you find that you're not getting the same behavior I'm demonstrating here, it's likely an issue with your collision. Now collision tends to be kind of a tricky thing. Um, you can do new collision in 3D Studio Max, uh, but there's not a lot you can do with it directly in NIFScope. There are a few things you can do, and I'll probably make a tutorial that, on that in the future on dealing with funny collision after making kit, kit bashes. Uh, but for now, just note, if you're not getting this exact behavior, it's likely a problem with your collision and you can research how you might fix that. So again, going back to the idea that I'm doing this in the long term, maybe by the time you run into this video, I'll have already done such a video. So take, an, uh, take a look through my series and see if there's anything about uh, NIFSCOPE based collision changes uh, or kit bashed based collision changes. All right, so the next thing uh, I'll show you with this particular model is that if we scooch down, you'll see that all of a sudden it starts sinking into the ground and it remains green. That's not normal behavior. You actually have to set that up. And if I sink far enough, it actually snaps back up. And these two particular behaviors are set up with P-WS sync min and sync max and those allow you to tell the game it's okay to sink a model into the ground and they tell you where the maximum point it might be allowed to sink in now that's kind of awkward to show with this particular model so i'll show instead with the uh, one of these foundations which makes a little more sense of why you would set it up a certain way so first up note that it gets kind of weird over here and that's because this is just a huge piece so if it's clipping with anything it'll stop from sinking but if i get it into a position where it's all on the ground uh, you'll, you'll be able to sink it correctly so you'll see that uh, to start it kind of snaps to the ground nicely and that's the origin point so the origin point is at the bottom then as you scoot down you get to the the sink factor where it's sinking in and then eventually it stops and that is where the sink max comes into place and you can see why it might be done like this you would think that you would want the player to be able to sink nicely in but you don't want the whole thing to sink in the ground and have the actual uh, core of the model the palette type part you don't want that to go underground you want that to be visible so that's why the sink and that is done by having the sink max set just below the edge of what would what i'd call the palette top uh, and so those are the, the different ways you can set up syncing. It's a, it, it allows for some pretty advanced behavior, messing with the origin and the sync min and max. And uh, it's one of those things where you'll see most often that just the sync max gets used for a lot of things. Sync min is used a little less frequently. Um, but you can play around with those three settings and get some interesting behavior so that you can kind of help the player along with, with doing things. Because ultimately, all of these snap points are just meant to be ways to speed up placement in workshop mode. So you just want to look at ways that make things a little more user-friendly and that's what those are meant for. Uh, all right, so let's go back. Let's put that uh, foundation back. Let's bring this thing back up. There's one more snap point I added to this, uh, and this will be the last one we do with this model. And then there's one other snap point that I'll demonstrate later because I don't, I didn't put it on this model because it's, it's it has to be done independently. But I can actually show you on a existing Bethesda model what the behavior will be. Uh, but you can see that this thing can actually require power now, unlike our former outhouse bar. Uh, and that's what I did is I added a, uh, I added an antenna to it. I just changed up the static collection. One thing to note that's a little awkward um, with this particular one, and I did this intentionally because I wanted to prove a point, um, there's no collision on that antenna up there, which means I can't actually highlight that and attach a wire, which makes for a little weird behavior. Uh, but you can actually attach a wire just by activating anywhere on the model with Y, and then it brings up the wire, and you'll see that the wire attached up there. Now, the point on the model where the wire attached is a snap point, and that's called P-WS-SNAP. Um, but the reason I removed the the collision there is to show that you don't actually need collision to attach a wire. The P-WS snap can exist anywhere. It can exist floating above the model. Uh, it tends to just be to make it more immersive that uh, Bethesda would have the snap point be on part of the model. Um, but one of the other benefits to not having collision on the particular thing is then you don't have to deal with your model interfering with itself. So now I can do something like snap it to this, the wire to this, even if the wire would be clipping through itself. Whereas if it had collision and I wanted to come back through in this direction, direction and do it, it might block itself from uh, actually snapping there. So that's a, a reason you might remove collision from part of your model. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, you can put that P-WS-SNAP anywhere you want to choose the power connector. Now the actual ability to attach a wire and for a thing to accept power, that's actually done with keywords in the creation kit. I will show those for the sake of completing this this part of the tutorial. I'll show those in it, uh, but it's definitely not the focus. The focus is on snap points. So let's uh, go over to the last thing. I'm going to go to decorations and we're going to bring up some of the these uh, paintings and uh, we'll talk about uh, one other snap point type so one of the behaviors you might notice is that uh, with things like wall decorations as they tend to like stick like glue to the side of uh, of a static models so that you can kind of attach them more easily to the wall this is done with a snap called p-ws-auto place uh, and this is basically if you use that you can't use a lot of the other types without creating really terrible behavior so it tends to be either something is meant to be a wall decoration or something is meant to be independently placed and rarely will 
In fact, I can't think of any examples. Bethesda did successfully where they used both. Um, so that is the last snap type, and that's for things that you expect the player is going to want to exclusively attach to wall, like paintings or signs and things like that. So now let's hop into Nifscope, and I will show you how to do these different things. Okay, so we're in Nifscope. I've got the model open, and I've already added these nodes, or these uh, snap points. Since you guys already have watched the first video, likely you'll know how to do that yourself. So I just want to talk a little bit about uh, how, ways you can go about positioning these and the best places to put particular snaps. So I added uh, four additional snap points. So we, we, what we do for that is you change the number of connect points and by entering, double-clicking and entering number here, and then double-click this refresh symbol, and it adds more to the bottom. Um, so I went ahead and uh, named each of them accordingly. So it's P-WS rotation, which you can see I have in this weird location location very abnormal for this type of model in reality we would want this to be kind of centered in the model so if i brought up our translation i would put this back at uh, zero 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 what i like to do is put it either floating above or floating or floating below the model so it's not right on top of the origin which tends to be at zero 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 so that way i can quickly identify uh, the difference between them so in this case i'll leave it at 50. Um, another thing you'll notice here is that i changed the rotation and i did that on purpose so i could uh, point out the fact that changing the rotation of the rotation snap point has no impact in the game so even though i made this a weird 90 degree angle you would think oh maybe that will make it so it rotates on a different axis that's not actually the case um, so it doesn't actually matter what you enter for those you should just leave them at zero 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 the the models are designed uh with uh with the game to always rotate around uh, the z axis they're always going to rotate around um in a left right methodology so I don't know if that would be called methodology, but you know what I mean? They would always rotate around uh, left and right as opposed to being able to rotate around, a, uh, say, from top to bottom like this. It might, it's not going to rotate like that, and it's not going to rotate front to back. With mods like Place Everywhere, you can alter the axis that the rotation is done, but by default, the game always rotates around the Z-axis. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit Accept there. Um, if we click on our uh, rotation once again... Let's see if we can find where did that node end up. Uh, okay, so right now it's inside of one of our other nodes, and that is likely going to be our, uh, it's probably inside of our sync max. So sync max is an, I, I set it up to just float a little bit, and that's the point where you could see where uh, when we got down too far, it was snapping back up to this point. So it was snapping back up to that sync point. Um, the the behave, Some of the wonky behavior we were seeing where it was letting it go way deeper than what I put as the sync max was due to the fact that the origin was way below. So if we had the origin in the expected spot, this would actually be the sync max. So that's something to be aware of. So if I were setting these up for real, the sync min and sync max, what I would actually do is probably remove the sync min on this because I don't care. I don't want to force them to sync it in, but I would want to set the sync max so that the floor was always showing. So what I would do for this particular one, um, and first for these, it's a good good idea to work in, in a view like this, kind of straight on. Uh, so we'll work like this, and I would uh, sink, shrink this down so maybe just a little bit of the floor was showing, so something like that. Uh, so you can see there, just a little bit of the floor would be forced to show, so it's never going to sink further than that. So that way it doesn't cover up, because you don't want the bottom of the ground to cover up our nav mesh if we were to have nav meshed in there. And uh, we'd hit accept there, and now you can see that our rotation, um, if I click on that, our rotation node is, or our rotation snap point, I keep calling them nodes, rotation snap point is once again exposed at the uh, Z50 point. So you can see at a glance where the rotation node is. And then if uh, we went to our sync min, I would probably remove this in this model, but if I were going to leave it in, I would probably just change it to just a little bit below the origin. So if we bring this back up here, I would put it just a little bit into the wood. So maybe something like that. So just it forces a little bit of sinkage, but not much. Otherwise, you can remove this node altogether. The uh, sink min is definitely not. And I, did I just do that on the rotation? Let's see. No, I didn't. Uh, yes, I did. I did it on the rotation by accident. Uh, okay, so now I have the sink min. Um, I would put that right above the bottoms, or I would just remove it altogether and not use that node. So let's push the rotation uh, back up here just so it's out of the way. And hit accept there. And then um, lastly, we'll do, well, the, I guess not lastly, second to lastly, we will move our origin back up into the proper position so it would react as we'd expect. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and put this at zero to start, and then we'll zoom in here. And uh, generally, you want your, your best place for your origin is at the lowest point where it would 
uh, it would feel right for the player to set that on the ground. So I like to just find, so even though there's a little bit of this metal of the model sticking out, I think most players are going to think that's not going to be load bearing, um, but the bottom of the wood seems to be the ideal location. So that's where I would put the origin, but it's up to you. Um, and uh, again, that determines when the model will, will set up, will flag green for the player. And while for most of you PC players with place everywhere, that green is irrelevant. You can place wherever you want, but for Xbox players, it's very important because that green is pretty much the only place they can place. And then they have to use mods like Place Anywhere, which do not have anywhere near the ease of use that Place Everywhere does on PC. So it's a little wonkier for them. So it's best to try and make your models work. Uh, if you're going to release on Xbox, it's best to try and make your models uh, friendly in that regard. Uh, so that puts all of those points in a good spot. So now, and I'll, I'll go back in game just to show the difference as to where you can see like, how the sync max and min works. Uh, next up, let's do the P -W, oh, excuse me, P WS snap. Um, so this, uh, whenever you add a new snap point, it starts down at zero, zero, zero. It can be difficult to get this thing up into position because it's uh, in the sense that it's there's a lot of space usually between these. Um, but you don't have to line it up on the model if you don't want to. It can exist anywhere. And if you just use the combination of views, and I, what I like to do is bring up this uh, this thing here and just type it, start typing up numbers uh, to try and figure out what's close. And then once I get it close, then I'll just kind of scoot it into place. Uh, then I might switch to a top view and then uh, start adjusting these and, and moving it into position. So that's the power, the power one I always, I tend to find is the hardest one to set up just because uh, usually when you're setting up snap points on a model itself with uh, ground pieces, they tend to be in blocks that are even distribution of units. So they tend to be in blocks of 64. So it's easy to jump to the edges or you can copy and paste uh, from other models. But the power snap, I tend to, it tends to be very artistic. And so then just using these different views and uh, slowly adjusting the uh, different XYZ positions will get you into a good spot. Now note that the rotation actually doesn't matter for that, so it doesn't matter which direction I'm facing it. That, right at the center of that uh, circle, that is where the wire is actually going to get attached. All right, so now we will uh, pop into the CK and I'll show you the power snap points, so the actual, uh, or the keywords that you need. So if we bring up our uh, furniture outhouse bar 02 here, Let's bring this up and it takes a little while. Um, you have to add on a couple of different things. So the first up you need to add uh, is if you want an object to be able to accept power, you need the keyword workshop can be powered. So you just add that on. And then if you want the, a, it to be wired in particular, because there's two types of, of powering. There's the radial power where it just needs to be within range of a power source, which is things like the lights generally. But if you want to be able to actually attach a wire to it, you need this oddly named workshop power connection duplicate 000. That means basically Bethesda screwed up at some point and had two copies of this keyword. And so for whatever reason, they ended up keeping the duplicate version. That's why it's got that wonky name. But workshop power connection allows the wire to be attached. Um, and there's a third one, which I'm not actually using on here you can set up, which is the actor value power required. So if you want your item to actually require a specific number of power as opposed to just being wired, uh, if you set this, if you add this, so if I double click this and then punch in a number, so if I want it to require three power, uh, that's where you'll get the number next to the power that tells it that it needs to uh, have a certain amount of power from the grid as opposed to just being able to be wired up. So that's how you would add power in the creation kit. All right, now I've got NIFSCO open one more time. I want to show you guys the wall attachment things. This one's really simple. You just add one connect point. It's called P-WS-Auto Place. Uh, and as you can see there, you basically stick it to wherever the back of your particular item is with the point facing the wall. So it's real simple. Um, this thing then will just kind of automatically attach itself to any static model that this little point comes into touch with, into, uh, into contact with. And it's as simple as that. So setting up wall items is the absolute easiest snap point type you can do. All right, so now we're going to head back into game, and I'll show you the uh, changes we made to the outhouse. Okay, so we're back in game with the changes to our outhouse, and you can see that now it rotates in the center as you'd expect. Uh, it goes green when you place it on the ground, and if you watch closely, you'll see I can only uh, sink it in just right to there. So just a little tiny bit of sinkage, uh, and that's how those uh, nodes would generally be, or those, I keep calling them nodes, those snap points would generally be placed. Uh, so you guys should hopefully with this and another one have all the information you need to do all sorts of different snap points Definitely experiment with them There's some interesting things you can do with snap points by doing things a little non-standard um, From maybe what I showed you But if you experiment with different placements of those those are all of the snap points that the game supports by default that have special functionality uh, The others you can make up as you as you go or use the vanilla ones I talked about this in the first video the fact that you can basically
basically make up the uh, word that you want. So p dash ws ws dash anything uh, will tend to work, but it'll only snap to other things of that same name class. So uh, I hope you guys uh, find this useful and you will be able to make uh, all the snappiest, best workshop items you can now.